camera sensors can't actually see color. Seriously, they can't. So how do we still take color pictures? Well, mostly by guessing, actually. So why can't cameras see color? Well, on a fundamental level, a camera sensor is just an array of photosites, and a photosite is just a device that will produce voltage depending on how much light hits it. But you'll note that this doesn't actually tell us anything about the color of the light. It only tells us the intensity of the light. There's literally no mechanism on a camera sensor that can determine the color of the light that hits a given pixel. It just doesn't exist. So we need to figure out a way to extrapolate color information off of a device that can't actually detect color. One thing that can help us get there is something called a color filter. A color filter is basically just something we can put in front of the sensor that will only allow a particular range of wavelengths to pass through and block all the rest. So for example, I could put a red color filter in front of my camera sensor and then it wouldn't tell me the amount of light, it would tell me the amount of red light. And while this is a step in the right direction, it doesn't give us everything that we need. In order to represent a complete color, we need a minimum of three channels of information, and usually that's red, green, and blue. So just knowing the amount of red light present at a given pixel doesn't help us determine the color. It only lets us know how much red there is. We need to know the amount of red, the amount of green, and the amount of blue. So how do we figure that out? Well, we can only put one filter in front of our photosite at a given time. If we put red, green, and blue filters in front, well, that would just block out everything. That's not helpful. So how do we get all three channels of information? Well, one early approach was called the 3CCD system. A 3CCD would basically use three separate CCD sensors. Each one would have a different color filter placed in front of it, and a complex prism system would split the incoming light so that every sensor was looking at the exact same image. So we'd have one sensor telling us the amount of green, one sensor telling us the amount of blue, and another sensor telling us the amount of red. And we could just combine that information together and create a full color image. And that worked, actually. Three CCDs were very common, particularly in TV, for quite a while. And if you look at old video cameras, you may very well see three CCD printed on the side. That's what this means. It has three sensors, one for each channel of color. While the three CCD did certainly work, it wasn't a very good solution because using three sensors to capture one image, it's pretty inefficient. You would need to not only pay for three separate sensors in one camera, but you'd also need to figure out how to power them all, cool them all, and process three separate versions of the same system. It was very inefficient, and it made the cameras bulky and expensive. So we really needed a better solution to this problem. So that brings us to the solution used in almost all modern cameras, the color filter array. Basically, instead of putting one big color filter across the entire sensor, we would split it up and we would put different color filters over different pixels on the sensor. Some would have red filters, some would have green filters, and some would have blue filters. And that way, we would have all three channels of information present on the same sensor. The most common implementation of the color filter array is called the Bayer filter, named after the scientist who invented it. The Bayer filter looks like this. It's a simple pattern that you can tile across however many pixels you need. You'll notice that 25% of the pixels are red, 25% are blue, and 50% are green. Why is there more green? Well, in order for the pattern to tile properly, one of the colors had to get doubled up. And since human eyes are most sensitive to green light, it made sense that the sensors should mimic this property. So, okay, we can put a Bayer filter in front of our sensor, and now we have all three channels of information present on a single chip. Great, but while we do have all three channels present across the entire sensor, we don't have all three channels present at each individual pixel. Each pixel still only has one color filter in front of it and can only report one of the three necessary channels. One solution would be to just combine pixels together. You could take each two by two block of photosites and combine them together for one full color pixel. But 
While this would work, it would also dramatically cut back our resolution. We would need three or four photo sites on our sensor for every one pixel of output. So your 4K sensor is now a 1080p sensor, and your 1080p sensor is now a standard def sensor. That would suck. So what we really need is a way to extrapolate a full color image from this incomplete set of information, because we're most of the way there. We have a lot of color information to work with. We just need to combine it all together in the right way. And that brings us to the solution used by modern cameras, the debayering algorithm. We put a Bayer filter in front of our sensor, capture a Bayer image where each pixel only has one channel of information, and then we put that Bayer image through an algorithm that will basically intelligently guess what color should be present at each pixel based on its neighbors. Because while every pixel only has one channel of information, its neighbors always have the other two channels. So you're sort of intelligently guessing what color should be present at each given pixel. It doesn't know exactly what the right color should be, but it can use the information present at that pixel, as well as the information from its neighbors, to make an intelligent guess. But I can't actually tell you exactly how debayering algorithms work, because for one thing, the math is way too complicated and I don't understand it. And for another, the exact details of each debayering algorithm is a proprietary secret because a better debayering algorithm can produce more natural and lifelike colors. So if your debayering algorithm is slightly better, then your camera will produce better colors and you'll sell more cameras. And this is a big part of what people mean when they talk about a camera's color science. You might have noticed that if you point two different cameras from two different brands at the same scene, the colors they produce will be slightly different. And that's because different companies' debayering algorithms work in slightly different ways. They're all trying to produce a natural and lifelike image, but that's a bit subjective, and different companies might go about it in different ways. And camera companies are constantly working to improve their debayering algorithms, to produce better looking color images out of the same Bayer sensors. In fact, if you're capturing in RAW, you can sometimes even upgrade previously captured footage to new color science. RAW formats often save the Bayer image as is and rely on post-production software to perform the debayering. So when these companies come out with new debayering algorithms, they can be applied to old RAW footage and retroactively make them better. Now this does only work in RAW, but still you can see the evolution of debayering algorithms with each new generation of cameras. You'll constantly hear people talking about which camera company has the best color science that produces the most natural skin tones and stuff like that. And this all stems from the fact that cameras can't see color. If they could, none of this would be necessary, but they can't. They can only see in black and white. And so we use these complex filter arrangements and algorithms to try to guess at what color is supposed to look like because we can't actually tell. So if you're ever looking at a digital image and you're frustrated because it doesn't look the same as it did to your eye, give your camera a bit of a break because it can't actually see color. It's only making a guess from incomplete information. So anyways, I know this video was a little bit different. I'm trying something new and I hope you all enjoyed it. Anyways, my name is Cameron Crocker, signing off.